Jin is in the kitchen um, with his... Uh, this is his most famous dish. Um, as a proud Italian, this is what? <laughs> Salsiccia nel buco. And do you have this in Italy? No. No. <laughs> no. This, I learned this recipe here. Salsiccia nel buco, sausage in the hole. Toad in the right. hole. OK? Don't like the word toad. Because that's the problem. We don't sell this dish enough in the restaurant because you use the word toad. OK? It's, it's a British tradition, though. It's we, when you say to a British person, toad in the hole, they oh. don't think of a real toad. OK, but what about if you've got a foreigner that he comes in the restaurant, he's going to go on Google Translate and he's going to say, oh, what is that, toad in the hole? I don't want that. What about spotted dick? <laughs> they may go for that, but they're not going to go for a toad. Another one, they're just, br they're just classic British things that, you know, people know what they mean. I think if you ask 100 people right now at home, if you phone people and say, what do you prefer, Hold a toad on, in so the he's... hole <laughs> or a sausage <laughs> in the hole... It's a different show. Right? <laughs> if you ask them, they will say, I'd rather have a sausage in the hole. Right. OK. OK? okay. Right. Now, uh, Josie, you don't eat pork. Do you know what, Gino? I watched Babe. You know the film Babe? <laughs> yeah. Like the little pig? And I have not eaten pork since I watched that at the cinema all those years ago. Well, I'm so, I didn't bad. know. I didn't know that's because right. obviously Holly's... Well, that's here. all right. Yeah, you weren't meant to be here, Holly's supposed... But you know what? Lovely match. The way I do my sausage in the hole, you can put in the hole whatever you want. Right. doesn't have to be a sausage. It can be vegetable, it can be... i done it with fish, with flaked cod. Because this is a technique, remember, it's not really a dish. I'm going to go through this because you look... You... you you rousing. How do you say you Frowning. 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 Uh, but it's only... I can't imagine how you do uh, cod like this, cos it would show fall you. apart. But okay. I'll show you. OK. So, first of all, let's remember that this is nothing more than a technique, a sausage oh. in a hole. You can pretty much put whatever you want in there. You can put roasted vegetable. As I said, you can put fish. We start with the butter. OK? Very important to get the butter balanced. The way I do it, butter like everybody else, I do a, the same amount in a cup so it's the same amount of flour, the same amount of eggs, the same amount of milk. You cannot go wrong. OK, so the flour, the egg, you mix everything together. There is not the one that goes before, the one that goes after. That is all nonsense. Just you, mix um, everything together. Do you sieve the flour to make no. it lighter? Oh, right. No, no. Because nowadays you don't need to before. 20 years ago, we oh, used right. to have lumps in the flour. Nowadays, we don't have any more. It's like, it's like nowadays when people, they oversalt aubergine. They say, put the salt on the aubergine for 24 hours. Yeah. No, an hour is OK, because nowadays the aubergine, they, because everything is done under the kind of uh, glass houses, they don't have the bitterness like right. they used to have. Flour is the same. Now most of the flour is sieved. OK? So you mix everything together, pinch of salt. No more, nothing more than that. Now, this needs to go into the fridge. Because to get the fluffy kind of Yorkshire pudding effect, which mm -hmm. is, that's what it is, it's a Yorkshire pudding, you need to make sure that the butter is freezing cold and the tin where you're going to cook it is extremely hot. Now, what we did, I'm going to show you what I've done here. I pick up my sausages, I chop them up, and I put them in the tin where you make your Yorkshire pudding. OK? Yep. Yep. At this point, at this stage, you can do everything you want. Philip, you said, how about if it was cod? Yeah. You cut pieces of cod. Nice chunks of cod, you put them here and you just roast them. That's the only thing that you do. You want to put a bit of rosemary, a bit of salt and pepper, that is completely up to you. So, what I've done here, it could be done with roasted vegetable, it could okay. be done with cod, it could be done with salmon. Yeah, and I Absolutely it. fine. That's a good idea. Now, what you do, we put a little bit of oil in there, just a touch of sunflower oil. Don't use extra virgin olive oil or olive oil because their smoking point goes very high. Use sunflower oil so right. it gets really hot. Now, technically, this goes back into the oven for a good 15, 20 minutes. You want the oil very, very hot. Always use the towel mm -hmm. where you pick it up from the oven, you take it out, and very simply, guys, what you do, you put the butter on top like this, make sure that you don't overdo it, otherwise it's going to go everywhere. And then it goes back into the oven between 15 and 18 minutes. I put the oven at 200 to 220 degrees. The secret here is to make sure that the oven is really really hot, right. OK? So once you put that one in there, I'll show you the one what they look like. So what? just reiterate that oven temperature again. 200, 220. If you can put it to 240, if your oven goes to 240, even better. Because what's happened? The hottest is the oil underneath. When you put the butter and then... Yeah. ..start to fluff up. Right. That's the way to do it. And that's what you get, nice and simple. As I said, at this stage, you can put pretty much whatever you want inside. Now, for the gravy, I like to do a beautiful, simple 
onion, red onion, and rosemary gravy. So where do we start? We start here in a pan where we go the rosemary and the uh, onions. Mm -hmm. In there, make sure that you caramelize so you scrape the pan all the time. Mm. In there, straight away, we're gonna put a little bit of honey just to make it extra sweet for the red onion. And you keep stirring, you keep stirring, and that's what you do. Then you got the wine. Very important to put the wine now. Philip, why do we put the wine before any other liquor? So it pours off the alcohol? Yes. So you bubble the wine away, so the alcohol goes away, the flavor of the wine stays in there. Once you've done that for a good five to six minutes that it's bubbling away, we use balsamic vinegar. Okay? I... Again, we, we put another sweet in there, but with a little bit of acidity from the balsamic vinegar, so it balances well, otherwise it's not too sweet. Once you've done all of that, that has been bubbling for a good half an hour, reduced by half the quantity of the liquid, then very easily, see what I've done here? I've strained it. You put a little bit of stock, <laughs> you can put chicken stock, vegetable stock, whatever you want. You strain it, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then all the liquor, without the peas in there, is in this pan here. You don't use any granules at all? What? <laughs> no. What's a granule? Oh. I, I just, because I always use the granules, say. What is the granules? Gravy granules. The okay, ones... gravy granules, you got all the flavour here in the onion, in the, in the honey, you want to put in the granule. So... No. <laughs> I've never seen a gravy without a granule. <laughs> <laughs> so... I go, get, get granules. Sorry, how about the cut or the pot? The, the orange lid. There is, Lovely. There is no need for granules. Oh, sorry. You put it here and see that you got the beautiful... Yeah, look at that. Smell this. Oh, Smell. yeah. Oh, yeah, huh? yeah. That's in the granule. Yeah. Gorgeous. No, no granule yeah. needed. No granule needed. Oh. Now, how do you thicken this up? How do you thicken this up? We go corn flour. Have you ever yeah. used corn flour? 45 seconds, yeah. Gina. It's all right. Corn flour, you put a little <laughs> bit of water in there, so it becomes like a paste. The corn flour goes in there, and then you keep stirring, and this is how it gets thickened. So you don't need any granule, because in the granule, I guess there is also some thickened agency to make it thick. This look, I'm going to show you now what it's going to look like. So you're going to put your sausage in the hole here. And look how it gets thick very, very quickly. Yeah. It's absolutely oh. beautiful. And I think the proof, the proof is always in the eating, uh, which <laughs> I have actually done. I think I've pretty much eaten. Cranberry right? jelly. I've I, 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 all sauce well. and no meat today, so there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, thank you for smothering over yeah. the sausage I don't eat, but that's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Josie, you don't eat sausages. <laughs> You're using <laughs> granule. You are my worst customer. Thank you. For all the details of today's <laughs> recipe and more delicious ideas from our This Morning Chefs, head over to our free This Morning app.